Hello, it's Dr. Mintz. I wanted to look at this case of a uh, chronic basal ganglia infarct. This is primarily to illustrate some of the anatomy, but also give you some of the principles that we encounter frequently in evaluating these CTs. And basically what we see here is an abnormality on the right side that's kind of linear. You see that linear low attenuation that's about the same attenuation as the fluid in, or the CSF, in the ventricles. Well, how do we look at something like that and know that it's chronic? The most important thing to look for is associated atrophy, which means that there's loss of brain substance. What loss of brain substance does is it allows the adjacent areas to expand. So the fact that this sylvian fissure is very large compared with that and that this right lateral ventricle is very large compared with the other side is because there's been considerable loss of brain substance where this basal ganglia infarct took place, which is in the region of the external capsule, but it does involve portions of the putamen. So looking for this sign of what they used to call ex vacuo dilatation, which means dilation of the adjacent structures as a like a vacuum effect. But this atrophic change that we see in association with an old infarct, enlargement of the adjacent lateral ventricle, enlargement of the adjacent cortical sulci, in this case sylvian fissure, all signs that this is chronic and not acute. A very important sign to look for. Where are we here? The tentorial incisura. Here's the tentorial incisura, the top of the cerebellar vermis, calcified pineal, third ventricle, lateral ventricles, foramen of Monroe coming down into the third ventricle, cerebral aqueduct in the midbrain, quadrigeminal cistern, ambient cistern on each side, fourth ventricle, prepontine cistern with the basilar artery, here we see the left middle cerebral artery coursing over toward the left sylvian fissure. We sometimes catch that very nicely like that. 